Why do guns kick back when they're fired? How do rocket engines work? Why does the cue ball typically slow down when it hits a coloured ball, which speeds up? And why do I roll backwards when I throw a medicine ball forwards? Well, the answers to all these questions involve Newton's third law of motion. Newton's third law of motion is often stated as a little kind of rhyme. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. What does that mean? It means that forces never, and I mean literally never, exist on their own. Newton's third law says that whenever an object, let's call it object A, exerts a force on object B, then object B exerts an equally sized force back on object A. Even though it's not always obvious, forces always come in pairs, which are called action-reaction pairs. In this lesson, we're going to look at Newton's third law of motion and how it helps explain a range of different phenomena. If I push this trolley, trolley A, into this trolley, trolley B, you can probably guess what's going to happen. Trolley B will experience a force that will accelerate it towards the right. Let's have a look. No surprises there. Trolley A provided a force on Trolley B, which made it accelerate. However, there wasn't just one force acting, there were two. At the same time that A was exerting a force on B, which made B speed up, B was exerting a force on A in the opposite direction. So what happened to A as a result of this force? Well, it slowed down. As you can see, the dots are clearly closer together after the collision. Trolley B, the trolley being struck, doesn't even have to do anything. Just the fact that it's there and that a force is being exerted on it by trolley A means that it exerts a force back on trolley A. We can label the equally sized but opposite in direction action-reaction pair of forces at the moment of impact. F A on B and F B on A. And as usual, we've drawn the forces as if they're acting on the center of mass of the trolleys. The same thing happens in this collision. Car A exerts a force on car B, which makes car B accelerate. But as it does, car B exerts in the opposite direction an equally sized force on car A, which makes it slow down. Of course, friction is also acting, but that's a different story. Now the expression reaction force kind of implies that it comes after the action force. But in fact, the two forces, which are equal in size, but act in the opposite direction to each other, occur at exactly the same time. Billiard ball collisions also involve Newton's third law. The cue ball exerts a force on the coloured ball, which speeds up, and at the same time, the coloured ball exerts a force back on the cue ball, which causes it to slow down. This process can occur any number of times in quick succession. The so-called Newton's Cradle demonstrates this exact principle as well. As does this collision. Human A exerts a force on human B so that human B speeds up, and at the same time, human B, just by being there, exerts a force back on human A, which makes human A slow down. Now even though the action force and the reaction force are always, always equal in size, the effect on the acceleration of each object varies depending on the mass of the objects that the forces act on. Let's go back to Newton's second law for a moment, F equals ma. For any given force, the acceleration of an object will be smaller when the mass is larger. If we rearrange the formula, we get A equals F over m. For example, if a force of 1 Newton is applied to a 2 kilogram mass, its acceleration will be 0.5 meters per second per second. But if a 1 Newton force is applied to a 100 kilogram mass, its acceleration will only be 0.01 meters per second per second. A given force. Thanks for watching this short excerpt from episode 8 of the famous Shedding Light on Motion series, Newton's Third Law. If you're a teacher looking for an easy but effective way of teaching the topic of motion to your students, then visit our website to check out the series and to get hold of it. In this episode, Newton's Third Law, 
we look at that most poetic of all laws. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Newton's third law, in conjunction with Newton's other two laws of motion, can help us explain how rocket engines work, how our muscles work, why there's more to designing robots than just building motors, why guns kick back when they're fired, why we move backwards when we throw a ball forwards, and a whole lot more. You can read the full transcript of the program, complete with dozens of screen grabs, and download the worksheet that accompanies the program on our website. So visit us today.